But this morning, uh, we're in Proverbs chapter 17. And um, I, I've kind of gotten to the point in these Proverbs that I'm, I'm just really trying to pick a theme through them. It, it, Solomon, again, it, the Proverbs are so scattered with his thought. I, I think Solomon may have had ADD. I don't know. Um, but he goes from one thing to the other. But there's a word that's repeated um, a few times over and over in this chapter. And just a tidbit of, of kind of Bible study. Anytime you see repeated words, it, it can be indicating that God's really trying to reinforce or to say something to us. So we're, we're going to look at a word that was repeated uh, three different times in Proverbs chapter 17. It's, it's a word that's throughout other chapters in Proverbs, but I'm not sure that I've uh, highlighted this yet. But it really struck me as I was reading in my quiet time this morning, uh, this word strife. Uh, the word strife means to have um, contention. It, it means to have uh, enmity. It's not necessarily uh, outright blows with one another, but it's strife. It's just where there is tension in the air, if you will. And um, for those of us who are on this morning and we've ever been married, we understand what that is, to have strife. Um, if you've ever worked in a workplace, you understand what that is to have strife. If you've been a member of a church, you understand what that is to have strife. Um, in all of life, there are opportunities and there are uh, situations where strife can come in. Uh, it's not just disagreement. Uh, we, we can always disagree um, on certain points that, that are not clear in Scripture, perhaps. But... Uh, or how to do things in the household or whatever. But, but this is where there, it goes beyond that. It be, goes beyond that disagreement, and, and it's to where there's strife there. And if you're like me, I'm very uncomfortable if I have strife with anybody. It's, it's not that I'm a people pleaser. I, I don't try to just please people, except for Sandy. I try to please her. Uh, but I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I saw a commercial the other day where... Uh, the husband walks into the den and his wife's sitting there on a couch and she's not facing him. She's facing outside and, and she doesn't say anything to him. And, and he says to her, is there something wrong? And she goes, no. <laughs> and he turns around and walks out of the room. Well, that no didn't mean no. Amen. There's strife there. And Solomon writes about this. He says in verse uh, one of chapter 17, he says, Better a dry morsel with quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. And you get the picture there. It's better to have a dry piece of chicken than to have a spread on the table when there's strife in the household. Um, it, it, it's just uncomfortable. It's not good, right? And you can apply that into any kind of place where uh, people are are together. It can be in the workplace. It can be in the church. It can be. It can be in a school. Wherever it is, it's better to have a dry morsel with peace than to live in a house where there's a feast on the table, but there's strife in the house. He says again. He uses that word again in verse fourteen. He says the beginning of strife is like letting out water. So quit before the quarrel breaks out. If you can picture a floodgate, if you can picture a dam, and when they begin to release the water slowly, um, he says that is the beginning of strife. In other words, you recognize when strife is going to be there. And he says, so quit before the quarrel breaks out. In other words, find a means of resolution. Or um, it may not be the other person that has a problem. It may be that I have the problem, so, or you have the problem. So we ask the Holy Spirit, God, search my heart. Lord, do I have any selfish motives in this, God? Do I have any, um, any personal agendas in this? Am I not looking out for the good of the whole and the family or the church or my workplace, God? Is it something in me? And if it is something in me, then I have the ability and the power of the Holy Spirit um, to surrender that to him and allow him to change my heart and my mind before I open that dam and cause a quarrel. Very difficult to mend broken relationships once that quarrel has broken out, right? And so uh, in all of my relationships if, with, with my wife, with my kids, with my friends, with 
church members, with uh, people I work with. Um, I ask, I try to anyway, I'm, I don't always. I, I want to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, search my heart, God, and see if, show me if there's any impure motive here before I, before I kind of respond in this way of strife. He uses that word a uh, third time in verse 19. He says, whoever loves transgression loves strife. He who makes his door high seeks destruction. So the one who loves sin, the one who loves contention, the one who loves fighting, uh, this one loves strife. I, I thought about this, you know, before I was saved. Um, I, 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 I kind of welcomed a fight. Um, or contention, strife. Uh, I would find ways to argue about things. Um, and, and and I'm not trying to be arrogant in saying this, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit because he's tempered me. My wife wouldn't have been able to live with me almost 37 years now had had Jesus not saved me. Um, because I had particular ways, and, and I would fight over them. I, I can remember, I'm telling you too much information right now, but I can remember uh, I had particular ways that things should be done. And I can remember um, Sandy folding some of my laundry, and, and it was my, my undergarments, my socks and my underwear and T-shirts. Well, there was a right way and a wrong way to fold clothes. And my response to her folding the wrong way was to pour it out and say, that's not folded the right way. How knucklehead was I? Thank God she didn't shoot me or leave me at that point. Um, but, but... Some things are just not worth holding on to. Now I've gotten to where, why fold underwear? Why match socks? Man, just dump them in the drawer, right? So uh, thank the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm so glad the Holy Spirit works in our hearts to temper us and to change us. Um, I'm reminded that, that Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the earth. Paul tells us in uh, Romans, I think it's chapter 12, somewhere around the middle there, verse 19 or so, Paul tells us that as much depends on us, be at peace with all people. Now, that doesn't mean we have to cartel and, and, um, and compromise what's, what's truly right, biblically right, biblically wrong. But, but it means as much as depends on us. Notice he doesn't say there, try to persuade the other person. He says, as much as depends on us, as much as depends on JMO, be at peace with all people. And so I, I need to learn to be quick to confess to the Lord when, when I have strifeful, transgressing kind of attitudes. Lastly, I want to close with what James um, exhorts us to in James chapter 4. James is, is called the Proverbs of the New Testament because James writes his letter similar to the way Solomon wrote Proverbs. James says this, beginning in verse 1, uh, and put this in whatever context. James particularly is writing to the church in his letter, uh, but we can, we can apply this. There's always one correct interpretation of a passage, but many applications. And so uh, the correct interpretation is, uh, or the context is when he's talking to the church, the body of Christ. But I can apply it again in my home. I can apply it in my workplace. I can apply it where I go to school. He says this, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? He says, is it not this, that you, uh, your passions are at war within you? You desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet and you cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. What James is saying is here, you know what causes fights and quarrels among you? In your home, in your church, in your school. Um, you covet. You want what somebody else has or you want it to be your way. And he says this leads to quarrel and fight. He later goes on to really rebuke them and call them evil in that passage. Um, so the takeaway for you and I today, um, let's think about those that we're in relationship with. Um, regardless of how casual it might be or regardless of how intimate that relationship might be. Are there any areas that, that we need to relinquish our will um, and say, God, it's not worth having strife with this person. 
Because if I have that strife in my household, it's going to affect everybody in my household. Uh, strife, if Sandy and I have strife, it doesn't just affect us. Even though our kids are out of the house now, they're adults and they're gone, um, it still affects the whole family. Um, and so as much as it depend, depends on me, be at peace with all people, um, uh, wherever that setting might be, in your workplace, some of you may be facing that, in the church, some of you may be, I know not everybody that's on this uh, attends this church, whatever church you might be in. As much depends on you, be at peace with all people. Um, unity, that's not uniformity, but that's unity in the same cause. I pray today that God would give you and me an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, that if we recognize that that seed has already been planted, that we have opportunity to cultivate that seed of the gospel. And man, if God, by his grace, would allow us to participate with him and watching him, being there when he saves someone, wouldn't that make it a great day?